Hey, welcome to the studio. Diana Trout here with a painted papers video. I've done this class numerous times over the years and I just repeated it in my live workshops here in the studio. And I thought I'd give you an overview of, of how you can go about making your own painted papers. I have watercolors out and many inks in warm and cool colors. I have two big jars of water and a bamboo brush and more than likely this is the only brush I will be using today. And I have a stack of papers with everything from Sumie, which is a very lightweight rice paper from Japan and um, Stonehenge and watercolor paper and envelopes and old book pages, etc. So I'm going to get started. This will more than likely be sped up, um, but I will do a voiceover along the way. I put out one of those great big drawing books to work on top of because that will give me even more paint, pa painted paper. Uh, the um, first piece I'm using is the Sumi paper. Uh, it's not rice paper, but uh, we call it that here in the States, but um, it's very thin and the water uh, really spreads quickly on it, but it's great for collage uh, materials. Just, yeah, it's just one of those don't worry about it papers. You can see that it the paint ran right through the paper, and uh, here's a piece of Stonehenge. I lifted up some of that paint from the previous paper onto the page, sort of making a print, and now I'm just dripping some pearlescent uh, with a dirty brush. Uh, sometimes that makes an interesting color. You have to be very a little bit careful so you don't get mud if you don't want it and just dragging that color around a little bit you'll notice the a big difference between using watercolors and using uh, inks the watercolors are meant to spread much easier the binder in them is uh, just formulated I guess I'm just guessing at this to spread easier. So you, on the other hand, the inks are more intense. Again, I'm just picking extra up and, and creating a beginning for another page, spreading that uh, color around, filling in some spots here and there. That yellow is a P.H. Martin Hydrus color. I have, I just purchased a set of them a while back. I just haven't really used them. This is the Liquitex inks. I, I really love those. And they do spread into the wet, just not as, you have to coax them a little bit more than you do watercolors. This was a piece of paper I probably just was playing around with that stamp. And this is a great way to use up that kind of paper if you, you might have hanging around. And this is silver ink. Just splashing some down there. Those eyedroppers that are in the ink bottles are really nice. You can draw with them and you can just drop the water down. If you're using a pen, a dip pen, uh, the best thing to do is dip the pen right straight into the bottle of ink. It just doesn't get, it gets, you can get it deep enough into the bottle of ink. Just running that paper around, adding some extra water. It's all about watching, watching it run for me. It's just part of the process part of it, of the whole magical experience for me is to watch that water run. 
Oh, I've got some of that Heidi Swap Gold uh, Spray Mist. I like that stuff. It's nice. And more of the gold Liquitex, which is, which is definitely, um, you can see the gold spray in the background, how different it is. There's, I think there's other gold sprays on the market. This just happens to be the only one I have. Um, again, extra uh, paint on the paper. I'm just picking it up with, oh, that's right. This is the coffee filter. It's a weird coffee filter. I think it's from a percolator for a percolator. I just happened to find them down in my local grocery store. So spritzing that page real well. And going into that with some pearlescent uh, paints and I like these pearlescents a whole lot somebody was saying that they liked that one of my students said they liked the plain colored paper on top uh, the plain colored paint or inks as a first layer and then the pearlescents as a second layer um, it doesn't matter that much. It's just a question of preference, and that was, um, you know, just blowing, blowing around that ink with a with a straw and um, more ink in a palette. These are handy to have. I have a bunch of these palettes. You can pick them up in packs at the craft store, and I I find them very useful. Um, just paint. Just just let it go, man. Just let it. Let it do its thing is basically uh, what you're looking for. And then you can do all sorts of things with these papers. You put them in your collage pile. You can make a little book. What is that? Oh, that's the color burst. That's really fun to use in this way. Um, yeah, and there's an envelope. I'm really liking this envelope thing. That'd be great to bind into a journal or just tip into a journal or send out some mail art. Uh, that The envelopes really turned out really nicely. And again, just p using that painted paper as a essentially a printing block because there's so much paint on it. Uh, and uh, oh, this is the perfect pearls. Now the perfect pearls have a binder in them. So you can use that on any surface and it won't rub off. Uh, the, um, the other one is a mica powder without a binder, but I believe as long as you use um, acrylic, it, it will be fine. Now this is, oh, something really exciting happened there that I hadn't really expected. So I painted wet marks, and then when I sprayed, and that's that Marabou spray, um, that was pretty cool. Th those Marabou sprays were very popular, very popular in my uh, class, in the painted papers class. Now this is, um, I like this stencil. I just got it from Joggles. It's one of their stencils, and it comes with a mask too, and I'm just playing with those marabou spray paints again and just that's pretty cool and graphic I think oh here's so this is um, one of net callback stencils and I sprayed it with water and then with the marabou and remember those are acrylic sprays that's a really neat print I like that Natalie um, very organic but very I like that pattern it almost looks like tulips it's it's pretty cool so a little too much again so I'm using a coffee filter to pick some of it up and oh there's a really nice subtle print there sorry I didn't show it to you Something I just kind of, as a continuation of that stripe, 
water striped and then sprayed. Um, that this this would work again. Natalie's uh, stencil, and I'm spraying it with water, lifting it off, and then I get a very interesting print from using the spray, uh, the acrylic spray on that. that real interesting I really like the picking it up because it really is interesting I left a few of these prints um, with the intense paint but I've the, you know the idea of, of using having backgrounds that are less intense is really attractive to me and again, just using another stencil in the same way, spraying through it. And um, looks like I'm just going to spritz that one. Beautiful, isn't it? Mm. That's a crafter's workshop. So anyway, some techniques for you today. If you like this video, please hit that like button and check out um, my blog post and subscribe if you're not subscribed. I'll see you soon.